All right, let's look into it. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew 14. Uh, we're going to look at verses 24 through 27. Matthew 14, verses 24 through 27. Very, very familiar text. Um, we've looked at it before from a different angle. Um, but I want to like really focus on something this morning. Uh, Matthew 14, verses 24 through 27. It reads as follows. Verse 24 says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. I'm going to read verse 27 again. It says, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Amen. If you're taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic, Be not afraid. Be not afraid. I can remember um, our daughter's uh, her first day of middle school. Her first day of middle school. Um, you know, it was a new school, um, so she had new teachers. She was going to have new friends, a new environment. A lot of things were going to be completely new for her. So on the first day of middle school, I, I took her to school myself. I, uh, we didn't put her on the bus. I actually drove her to school. And when I was dropping her off, she looked at me and she wanted me to walk her all the way to her classroom door. Remember, new environment, new teachers, uh, new friends. Things were new for her. But she didn't want to uh, walk to her class by herself. I mean, she didn't know the school. She wasn't familiar with the school and the environment. So uh, she wanted someone else to walk alongside with her. And being a good father, I walked her all the way to her classroom door. She was in fear. She was afraid. She was in a new environment, new friends, new, new everything. And she just wanted someone to walk alongside with her in this new environment. Grace Center, you know, a lot of times we need someone to walk alongside with us when we're afraid. No matter who you are, at different times in our lives, we all will be gripped with fear. Let me bring you up to speed with what's happening in the text and let's, let's break it down. Let's just take our time with it this morning. Uh, to bring you up to speed right before what took place from what we just read in the text is that Jesus he had just gotten done feeding 5,000 people. You know, they had the five loaves of bread and the two fish, and they were able to feed 5,000 individuals. A miracle took place. It, it took place in, in front of the people that were fed, and it took place. Uh, right in front of Jesus' disciples themselves. They were able to feed thousands of people off of five loaves of bread and just two fish. It was a miracle that took place. 
after all of this happened, Jesus, he, uh, he told his disciples to, to get on the ship, get on the boat, and go to the other side. So he sent his disciples away. His disciples were now going to the other side. They were on their way to their destination. They, 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 they heard from Jesus. Jesus told them to go. They had instructions from Jesus. They were on their way to their destination. But something happened along the way. Jesus sent them on their way and Jesus himself, he went up into the mountaintop to pray. Uh, Jesus needed some alone time. Yeah, Jesus was, was, was human. He was also God. But yet, here you see the humanity part of Jesus coming out. He needed to be alone. And sometimes, Grace Center, you just need to be alone. A lot of things may be happening, you may be tired, you may be frustrated. A lot of things may be going on in your life. And every once in a while, you just need to be alone. Jesus, he went up to the mountaintop to pray to be alone. He sent his disciples out to go to the other side on this ship. But he went up to the mountain to pray and to be alone. So that brings us up to speed from what is now taking place in the text. Let's walk through it again. Verse 24, it says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Yeah, the ship was, was now in the midst of the sea. Let's look at the, the midst of the sea. The middle of the sea. Um, in other words, they are too far from where they came from. And they're too far from where they need to be. They're in the middle of the sea. Um, the wind is, 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 is up against them. And they're in the middle of the sea now. They, they can't just turn back around. Because they're, they're in the middle. And they're in the middle and they need to continue to go forth to get to the other side. Because Jesus told them to go to the other side. But now they're in the middle of something here. And uh, the word says that they are now being tossed with waves. Uh, if you have ever been out in the ocean, the sea, the beach... You will know that waves are powerful. <laughs> waves will take down the biggest, the largest, the strongest man that there is. <laughs> you have the disciples who are in the middle of the sea and they're being tossed to and fro with these strong and powerful winds. And, you know, I know sometimes when uh, we go to the beach and uh, Lady Tanya, she loves going to the beach. She's a beach person. Uh, she loves going to the beach. Uh, maybe one day we'll get her a, 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 a beach house or something. But she loves going to the beach. And whenever we go to the beach, um, me, myself, I, I, I love to go far out there in the water. Um. You know, I go far out in the water and, you know, she barely got her ankles covered in water. But I'm, I'm out there far in the water. It's kind of kind of crazy because I'm not the best swimmer <laughs> in the world. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not the greatest swimmer, but but I find myself out there, you know, far out in the water. And sometimes I be looking at the lifeguards and they're, they're not saying anything to me, but... I'm just out there all by myself and, you know, Lady Tanya, she's looking at me with that look like, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she's not going to come join me out that far. She think, she believes Jaws is going to come get me while I'm out there. So she's not even trying to get close or near to me when I'm far out 
in the water. I just love being out there in the water. Sometimes when I'm far out there, I'm just by myself. No one else is around me. I'm just taking my time, just, just relaxing, just enjoying the water and so forth. I'm not thinking about no sharks. I'm not thinking about anything. I just love being far out there. And I'm so far out there that sometimes I can barely even touch the bottom of the floor of the uh, of, of, of the ocean. I know it's kind of crazy. And yeah, I'm, sometimes I do crazy stuff. But I just love to be far out there. And when I find myself far out there, uh, I will sometimes find the waves so powerful that it will just push you and you know, and sometimes I'll try to catch the waves as they're coming uh, towards me. So as the waves are coming towards me, I'll try to catch a wave. <laughs> I'll catch the waves and ride the wave and just float on the water. I love being out there that far out in the ocean. Waves are powerful. And here in the text, you see how powerful these waves are. I mean, it is pushing this, this ship, this boat back and forth. And the disciples can't do anything about it. No matter how strong they are, no matter how big they are, no matter how big the ship is, they, they are no match for the waves that are coming up against them. It also says, for the wind, the wind was contrary. Um, in other words, the, the wind was pushing up against them. In other words, they're trying to go in this direction, but the wind is pushing up against them. Um, they're, they're trying to go straight, but the wind is trying to push them backwards. They have instructions from Jesus to go to the other side. They're headed to the other side, but something is coming up against them. They are trying to get to the destination of where Jesus told them to go. Hang with me now. They are they are on their way, but now they have found themselves in the middle of the sea, in the midst of a storm. Uh, they have instructions to go. They're on their way to the other side. And as they're on their way to the other side, they're being tossed with the waves of the sea. And now the wind is also pushing up against them. Great sinner, there are certain things and certain people in life that are against you. <laughs> there are certain battles that some of us face. Certain things we're trying to do to get to the other side, but it's like you're trying to get there. You have instructions from God on what to do. But as you're headed in that direction, something else is pushing against you. Something else is contrary to you. Sometimes we're in this thing called a spiritual warfare. Many People don't believe in spiritual warfare. Even Christians, <laughs> some Christians, don't believe in spiritual warfare. Uh, Non-believers definitely don't believe in it. But I'm here to tell you that it's a real thing. Um, to battle up against something that is against you. Um, to go against an enemy that is against you. You have instructions from God to do something, to go to a certain place, to open up something, to, to do whatever he has asked you to do. But as you're on your way to doing it, it's like everything comes up against you. And now you're like, what now is happening? 
What is going on? I'm doing exactly what you've asked me to do, but it seems like I'm up against something right now. I don't know where to turn or where to go. I mean, you told me to do this. I am doing this, but now I find myself in the middle of a storm and I'm fighting the waves and I'm fighting the wind. <laughs> yeah, some of you are fighting battles right now. You're in a spiritual warfare against the enemy. And the enemy is coming up against Yes, you try to prevent you from getting from you getting to your destination. From you getting to the place of where God has called you to go. He's trying to prevent you from getting to the destination uh, of where you're supposed to be. He does not want you to arrive at your final destination. So he's going to come up against you, although you have instructions. From God. Now some of you may ask the question, well, well, Pastor, if 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 God has given me instructions, why do I have to go through the battles of life? Well, you know what? I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I don't know. The only thing I know is, is that we serve a faithful God that will be with us and that will go with us when we fight the battles against God. The enemy. Let's continue to read further. Watch this. Verse 25. It says, And in the fourth watch of the night, watch this, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Yeah. So, so you have the disciples. They're in the middle of the sea. Um, they're fighting the waves. They're fighting the wind. And then... In the fourth watch of the night, you have Jesus coming unto them. The fourth watch, the, the fourth watch. That's around uh, four o'clock in the morning. All right, four o'clock in the morning. Now let's 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 do something here. Let's 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 break down the text a little bit further here. Watch this. Um, let's go back to verse twenty-three. Let's look at verse twenty-three. Uh, real quick, and I'm gonna read up the verse 25. Let's let's break down some things here. Verse 23 it says, "And when he has sent the multitudes away, he, meaning Jesus, went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening, watch this now. And when the evening." was come, he was there alone. Verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. Verse 25. Watch this. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. So verse verse 23 um, in the, in the latter part of the verse, it says, and, and when the evening, the evening, the, the evening was come. Okay, the, the evening was come. All right. Uh, uh, um, he was there alone. But the ship was now, it was now in the middle of the sea. So when the evening came, stick with me. When the evening came, the disciples were in the middle of the sea. Being tossed with the waves and the wind in the evening. Uh, but Jesus, he does not come <laughs> until the fourth watch. But everything started to happen in the evening. But Jesus doesn't show up until the fourth watch. Until about four o'clock in the morning, but everything popped off a whole lot earlier. But Jesus does not show up until later on. Um, um, the disciples <laughs> they were battling this storm for a long time. Yeah. They were, they were uh, 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 in this storm, 
fighting uh, the, the wind, fighting the waves for a long period of time. Uh, the text, it, it, it clearly says, and when the evening was come, Jesus was in the mountaintop praying. Then verse 24 it says, but the ship was now, was, was now in the evening in the middle of the sea being tossed with the waves and the wind. But Jesus doesn't come to the fourth watch. He doesn't come to later on. You know, I was, I was, I was looking at this and I'm like, why didn't Jesus just come as soon as they went into the storm? Why not Jesus just leave the mountaintop, come to them when everything started to happen? Why did he wait for so long to come to his disciples? You know, Jesus is up in the mountain. He sees what's happening. He knows what's going on. But he's just up there <laughs> when everything started to happen. And, you know, he's just he's just looking at them and the disciples are afraid. They're in this storm. They don't know what's going to happen. They don't know if they're going to die. They don't know if the if the ship is going to turn over. They don't know what is going to happen to their lives. And Jesus does not come until later on. You know, a lot of us, we ask the question, Jesus, why don't you just come right now? God, why are you not answer my prayer right now? God, how come you're not coming to my need right now? I've been praying for this month after month after month and year after year. Where are you at, God? I've been I've been praying for this. I've been asking for this. I'm in this storm. I've been battling this for a long time and you are not coming to my rescue. What is happening? Well, we have Jesus for what? He's up in the mountaintop. He's praying. Now, I don't know exactly what he was praying about. I'm going to show ask him one day. <laughs> but maybe, maybe he was praying for the faith of his disciples to rise in the midst of the storm. Watch this. Um, they just got done seeing a miracle take place with Jesus feeding 5,000 individuals with five loaves of bread and two fish. A miracle took place. Jesus sent his disciples away. He went up into the mountaintop to pray. Now, I don't know if Jesus knew beforehand what would take place. I'm pretty sure he did. He was God in the flesh, right? But he was praying and his disciples are battling this storm. Could it have been that Jesus was praying for the faith of his disciples to increase and to rise up in the storm that they were in. Oh, great Santa, we all face battles. We all face storms. We are all up against something in life. And I know that right now as Jesus is sitting right next to to the Father making intercession on our behalf. I know that he's praying for our faith. I know that he's praying for us. The disciples were afraid. They didn't know what to do. As a matter of fact, verse 26, let's look at it. It says, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it is a spirit. <laughs> and they cried out for fear. They're in a storm now. They see something that they think is a ghost coming towards them, and they cry out in fear. The Living Bible translation says, 
They screamed in terror. Okay? They screamed in terror. They, they thought it was a ghost. They were seeing things. They, they thought it was something that, that, that could take them out. They thought it was something that, were, that was coming towards them to, 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 to wipe them away. They were afraid. But what they thought it was, it wasn't. Oh, let me say that one more time. What they thought it was, it wasn't. It wasn't a ghost. It was Jesus. They thought it was one thing, but it was something different. You see, the enemy sometimes will plant things in our minds to make us think it's one thing, but it's really not that. He'll have us to think that this is going to happen to you now, but it's never going to happen. Grace, I'm here to tell you right now that whenever the enemy is speaking to you, he's lying to you. The devil is a liar. He cannot tell the truth. The truth is not in the enemy. The truth is not in the devil. The truth is not in Satan. Right? So if he's telling you something is going to happen, it's going to be the opposite of what he's telling you. Because the truth is not in him. A lot of times we think one thing is going to take place because we hear the lies of the enemy and he fills our heads up with all these things that's going to take place and that's going to happen and we're going to go down and this is not going to happen. This is not going to take place. All these different things. It is a lie from the enemy. You know, we can have a, we can have a lump, you know, on our breast or whatever. You know, this breast cancer I wear this month as I wear my shirt, you know, and, and, and we may have a, 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 a lump somewhere and the end will plant things in your head saying it's cancer. You know, you can feel certain pains in your body and the end will tell you is, is this type of, you know, disease, this type of thing, this type of whatever, this type of symptom. And watch this. One of the worst things that you can also do is self-diagnose yourselves. Let me say that again. One of the worst things you can possibly do is self-diagnose yourself. Do not self-diagnose yourself. Because the enemy will plant things in your head. Listen to me, Great Center. He will plant things in your head to have you think it's one thing, but it's really not that. The disciples thought that it was a ghost coming towards them. But it wasn't a ghost. It was Jesus. They were in the midst of a storm, battling the wind, battling the waves, and they thought they saw something, but it wasn't really that. They were gripped with fear. They were afraid. But although fear gripped them and they were afraid, watch this, they needed to hear the voice of their Savior. They needed to hear the voice of their Savior. Verse 27, it says, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Yeah, um, he says, but, but straightway or immediately. Remember, uh, Jesus didn't appear to them early on, but he appeared to them when they were on the verge of just passing out. All right. When they were on the verge of just giving up. All right. And sometimes God speaks to us when we're at our lowest. Sometimes when we're at our lowest point in our lives, 
is when Jesus will speak to us. Jesus came at the fourth watch of the night. If he would have came too soon, maybe they would not have realized who Jesus, or maybe they would have realized that it was actually Jesus coming to them early on. But sometimes Jesus comes to us at our lowest point in our lives. When we don't, when we can't count on anyone else, we can't call someone to, to help us out in this situation. Jesus came to them when they were at their lowest. When they needed to hear the voice of someone that could save them in their situations. And you may be at the lowest point of your life right now. And you need to hear the voice of God speaking to you in your situation. You need to hear, hear God telling you it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. I'm going to walk alongside with you. We're going to do this Together, sometimes God doesn't speak to us until we're at our lowest point in our lives. Jesus tells them to cheer up. In other words, watch this. He reassured them. Then he said, it is I. That's all he said at first. He said, it is I. Now, it is I. Could have been a whole lot of individuals. He said, it is I. You know, it could have been uh, Peter's father. You know, it, it, it could have been John's father. <laughs> it could have been any of the disciples' fathers or other brothers or other or uncles or anyone. It could have been anyone. All the thing Jesus said was, it is I. <laughs> Watch this. The disciples had to recognize the voice of their Savior in the middle of the storm. Because the only thing that Jesus said at first was, it is I. So they had to know who I was. <laughs> they, 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 they had to know that, 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 that the I was Jesus. So they had to know who the I was, and the I was was the I am who is Jesus. <laughs> so, so, so uh, Jesus said, it is I. So when the disciples hear that, they should have known and recognized the voice of their Savior when he said, it is I. Come here, Grace Center. When you are in a storm, you need to recognize the voice of your God. That's why it's important for you to spend some quality time with God. Watch this. Before you enter the storm. The disciples. They spent time. With Jesus. Before. They went into the storm. <laughs> okay. Before Jesus sent them away. To go to the other side. They spent some quality time. With Jesus. They seen miracles take place before with Jesus. Now, it would have been unfair if this was the first miracle and the first thing that took place between Jesus and the disciples. You know, if the first miracle was this taking place and, you know, that in the middle of the storm, it would be, you know, I think unfair for Jesus to say it is I when they don't really know Jesus like they now know him in the text. But they spent time with him by now. They know his voice by now. Okay. So they, 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 they should have known that when Jesus said it is I, they should have said, that's my savior. <laughs> He's coming to rescue me. He's coming to save me. He's coming to get me out of the middle of this storm. We need to spend quality time with Jesus before we even get to a storm. Before we even encounter storms in our lives. Get to know Jesus. Get to know his voice right now. 
So here you have Jesus saying, it is I. And then he says, be not afraid. Be not afraid. In other words, I know you're in this storm. I know you think you're going to go under. But be not afraid. <laughs> it is I. Be not afraid. Uh, I'm with you. In the middle of this storm with you. Don't worry about it. Do not be in fear of this ship going down. It is I. Be. Be not afraid. Some of you are afraid right now with the storms that you're facing. And the storms that you're currently in. I'm here to tell you. Be not afraid. Don't let the enemy think and tell you that you're going to go under. You have Jesus. He knows what's happening. He sees what's going on. The same thing that he saw what was happening with his disciples in the middle of the sea. He didn't come running down right away. But he just waited. He let time go by. And then he came to their rescue. He says, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Long story short, as we wrap up, uh, Peter, the outspoken disciple, it was like, well, if it be you, Jesus, bid me to come. You know, uh, have me come out there and do the same thing that you're doing. Uh, Jesus told them, because he didn't say any name, he just said, come. Peter, he began to, to walk on the water and another miracle has taken place. There are two people in the entire history of the world that walked on water. That's Jesus and that's Peter. So here you have Peter um, doing a miracle. A, a, a miracle is taking place. He's actually walking on water. But something happened as he's walking on water. Um, he began to look around at what's around him. He began to look at the wind and him being tossed with waves and so forth. And as he's being tossed with, with waves and the wind and all of that, he, he begins to now sink. Mm. Now, 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 Jesus told them to come. Peter begins to walk on water, but he took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to look around. Oh, Grayson, when you're in the middle of a storm, when you're in the middle of the fight of your life. Don't take your eyes off Jesus. Peter, he was walking on water. A miracle was taking place. And as he's walking on water, he began to look around at what was happening around him. He began to look at the surroundings and things that was going on. Hmm. He took his eyes off of Jesus. Grace Center, do not take your eyes off of Jesus when you're in the middle of a storm. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes focused on the Savior. Although you're in the middle of a storm, watch this. We as believers, we walk by faith and not by sight. Because even when Jesus reached out to save Peter, he says, oh, thou little faith, why did you doubt me? He's asking Peter, why did you even doubt me? And why is your faith so small? Don't doubt what God can do. Use the faith that you have. But watch this. Use faith over fear of what is going on with you. 
I'm done, Greg Simmons. I'm done. Today I want to tell you is be not afraid. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Peter only began to sink when he looked at what was around him. Let's not look at what's around us, but let's walk by faith in this thing called life. Be not afraid of the storms that you're in. Be not afraid of what's going on in your lives. Because right when you think you're sinking, right when you think that it's not going to work out, if you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, we serve a God that can help us in every situation that we may be facing and with everything that we may be going through. I'm just here to tell you today, be not afraid. Be not afraid of what they say. Be not afraid of what they're thinking. Be not afraid of what's coming from, from, from the doctor, from, from, from the haters, from anyone else that is trying to come up against you. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. Be not afraid. The virtual doors of the church are open at this time. The invitation is extended. Perhaps you're, you're not saved today. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. Um, but today, something was said or done today that you're now saying, you know what, I, I want to place my, my life in his hands. I want to give my life over to Jesus if that is you, you can say this simple prayer with me. You can say, Dear God, thank you for thinking about me. Thank you for having me on your mind. On today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus came, that Jesus died, and that Jesus rose from the grave. If you have prayed that prayer, you are now saved. There are angels rejoicing in heaven because you have prayed that prayer. We would love to hear from you if you have prayed that prayer. We would love to connect with you. For all others, if you have any special prayer requests, we would love to stand in the gap and pray with you as well. Um, you know, we all go through things. We all are facing different things. So if, you're, uh, if you need prayer, let us know. And we would love to pray with you. Amen. At this point in the service, it is now ties and offering time. You can go to our website, uh, thegracecenterga.org. Uh, click on that give link and it have, has all the ways in which you may be able to give. So that's thegracecenterga.org. You can give through the site. You can um, give via the cash app. Uh, you can download our Giveify app, or you can mail your checks or money orders to us as well. Amen. Uh, as I mentioned before, next week we will be celebrating nine years in ministry. Uh, we will have our virtual service right here. Uh, you know, not doing anything big and elaborate this year, uh, but we will celebrate next week of um, being in ministry for nine years. So come back next week as we celebrate what God has done what God is also doing in this ministry. Amen. All right, everyone. Well, let's go ahead and pray now as we are dismissed for the day. But we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for this word that you have given unto us about being not afraid of whatever we may be going through. Well, I'll pray for those individuals today that may be facing difficult things. They may be in a storm right now, but whatever they're going through, whatever they're facing, I pray that you will strengthen them and that you will help them, and that you will show them that you're right there alongside with. I pray that they don't believe the lies of the enemy from anything that he's telling them. I pray for the individuals today who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. I pray that you will send someone uh, to them that will walk alongside with them in this new walk with you. I pray for the tithes and the offering today. Uh, I pray that 
Uh, you will use it for the building of your kingdom and bless those who gave and bless everyone who wanted to give but just didn't have it. Bless them as well. So we thank you for all that you do. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. Continue to use us for your glory and have your way. It's in the mighty name, the matchless name. It is in that name that is above every name that there is. It's in the name of Jesus Christ in which we do pray. Amen. All right, everyone, until next week, I love you. Be safe. Take care.